Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. You know, people come to God like this. They come to God, sometimes they come to God and they are afraid, like this sense that I have failed only recently, a sense of like, you know, I, I didn't measure up. I didn't do this enough. I didn't do that enough, you know? And then what you do to compensate for this, you try to do something else. You try to like, like uh, uh, do something good, but the reason you are doing that good thing is not because uh, it is an overflow from your heart. It's actually doing it because you are trying to cover up off the, for the lack that you think you have. So in people's eyes, it is good work, but in God's eyes, it is dead work. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. Now, he was a good king. He ascended the, the throne when he was about 16 years old. And he, uh, he was good at first, amen. But then he began to listen to the advice of his, the people around his peers. And, and he rejected the counsel and the wisdom of the older counselors in the multitude of counselors there is safety, his father wrote. The same counselors that were around his father who heard his father's wisdom, he rejected them as a result Amen. The kingdom was divided into two. And that's why you have the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. From his day, it was a split. This is how you cause a church split. And, uh, but later on, he repented and he walked with God for a few years. But later on again, he forsook the Lord, Rehoboam. He forsook the Lord and God sent a prophet and the prophet said this to Rehoboam, because you have forsaken me, I will hand you over to the king of Egypt, Shishak. And the Bible says in the fifth year, it happened the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. Now this king of Egypt, Mitzrayim, the place of double straightness, all right, the place that the devil wants to constrict your space, your influence, restrict your influence, restrict your movement, all right? Egypt, that's what Egypt means, amen? Uh, Shishak, okay, not the burger. That is Shake Shack. This is She Shack. Amen. She Shack. For those of you who are Indonesians, it's not Chicha. It is She Shack, king of Egypt. All right, he came against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and uh, in the fifth year. And this is what he did. What he did was terrible. It's very sad, especially for us. We see all the treasures of, that we saw, you know, um, in the temple of Solomon. We look at all the chambers and all that. But this is what happened. In the next verse, it says, He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Now, this gold shield of Solomon, there are 300 of them. 300 is the number of victory in the Bible. And each one of them Three to four pounds, listen, pounds of gold will go into one shield. That's pretty heavy. And there are 300 of them, and they are gold shields. So this king, Shishak, took away all the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place. Why bronze shields? Because bronze and gold, at first appearance, when you look at a gold shield and a bronze shield, it looks the same, you know? The shine is about the same. The kind of shiny, you know, uh, hue. In fact, we have a picture of uh, uh, the shields. The one on the left is a golden shield. The one on the right is the bronze shield. But to the untrained eye, if you ask, you start by the other way, you say that the one on the right is the golden shield, they also say yes. If there's nothing to contrast it with. So what happened was that the enemy took away the golden shield and... Rehoboam replaced it with a bronze shield. Okay, go back to the verse. Now, then King Rehoboam, to uh, put up appearances, this is what we do sometimes, you know, we, we put up appearances. We don't care what we are, it's more important what we appear to be. And um, uh, it's not important that there is something that's happening we don't want to deal with, it's more important the, imp the impression that we give. So King Rehoboam, you know what he did? Every time he came to the temple, this is what happened. He says, whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the gods carried them, the bronze shield. So when he come to the house and there's a drum rolling and all that, doom, 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 and all the 300 guards will carry the, what? Bronze or gold shield? Bronze. 
but the appearance is what? It's shiny and all that. People think that it is a golden shield. Now, I'm coming to the meaning afterwards, how it applies to us today. And uh, uh, after that, they brought them back to the gut room. Amen. So he had to keep appearances. Are you with me so far? So the enemy came and took away the golden shield. Now, shield is a symbol of what? Protection. Very good. One more time. Shield is a protection of is a protection of God's people from all the attacks of the enemy. Now, there is an anti-type in the New Testament of the shield that we're talking about, and it's found in the armor of God in Ephesians 6. Here it says of the shield, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench how much? All the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen. The Bible says, with the shield of faith, you will quench not 80%, not even 90%, all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen. It behooves us to find out what is this shield. By the way, in the Greek, the word faith there is preceded by the definite article. It is above all taking the shield of the faith. And this is shown in the Young's translation, taking up the shield of the faith. Whenever the Bible uses the definite article for faith, it is no longer just faith or healing or faith or miracle or faith for God to do this or faith, you know, or trusting God kind of faith. But it's a faith that the faith means the righteousness by faith. It is the righteousness by faith. One more time. When you hear the definite article before faith, the faith is always what? The righteousness of faith. Like Jude says, believers, come on, beloved, fight, contend for the, the faith once delivered to the saints. Amen. Somehow, by the time Jude was writing the epistle, a lot of people forgot about righteousness by faith already. They are going back to righteousness by works, coming under the law. Amen. Self-righteousness, hankering of the self. Amen. Trusting themselves, looking to themselves. And that's why there's no power. That's why there's no protection. So I want to say something to you right now. Goal, listen carefully, goal in the Bible always symbolizes divine righteousness. Divine righteousness. Silver? Come on, new creation church. Silver? Redemption. Hey, I'm so proud of this church. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Who's your pastor? I love this church. Can I take his place or not? Can he resign? I take his place. Amen. One more time. Silver is a symbol of redemption. Amen. And uh, uh, the, the children of Israel, they'll pay half a shekel of silver as a sign of atonement. Amen. And uh, silver is redemption. In fact, the word for money in the Old Testament is keseth, which is silver. Amen. Uh, brass, bronze. That's why there's a bronze altar where the animals are placed and the judgment fall on it. It's called the bronze altar. Bronze is a symbol of judgment. The cross, like the bronze altar has four corners. The cross also has four corners. Amen. So it is a symbol. Uh, bronze is a symbol of judgment. The church has given up divine righteousness. Therefore, there's no more protection. And they have substituted righteousness that has judgment in it. That means their own righteousness. Their own righteousness. Are you listening, people? Now, I want to tell you something about the gospel. The essence of the gospel is the gift of righteousness from God. The law is all about God demanding righteousness. Clearly, God said, do your best to be righteous. But God knew man cannot. But man is so proud. We proud beings. We do not know we cannot. We do not know. So God has to give us the law first. Because if God gave grace first, we, we will not understand grace. We want to be able to appreciate grace and give God all the glory. We'll give glory to ourselves because we don't know how bad we are. We say, thou shalt not steal. What is steal? Amen. God has to give the commandments first. Amen. Are you listening, people? So God gave the law. So the law is about demand from a holy God. Amen. So God says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Man could not. On Mount Zion, God gave the Spirit. And, and grace is not about God demanding anymore. It's God supplying. God supplying. So even now in our life, we don't live our life with a sense of demand. We live our life with a sense of supply. So people acknowledge, Lord, you are my righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Then when you do good, it's not to be righteous. It's an outflow. 
is something you want to do because you are righteous already. But whenever you try to become righteous, you are saying you are not. When you say you are not, you negate what Jesus did at the cross and the Holy Spirit has nothing to bear witness because you are now not in truth. Can you understand what I'm saying? That's why people pray, God, God, please hear me, God. God, you are like so far away. Why do you answer me, God? Finds that it seems as if God is farther away. But Pastor Pring, doesn't God just answer that prayer? Many times in His mercy, He does. Yes, He does. But that's not the prayer He's pleased with. What kind of prayer is He pleased with? Family prayer. A child doesn't come to me, my son doesn't come to me and say, Abba, Abba, he calls me Abba, okay? Abba, Abba, can I have one, one glass of milk? <laughs> yes, my little girl! <laughs> doesn't do that, right? Now, if, if you are a, a, a third party watching this, what do you think is happening? Do you think I'm a good father? You think that this father is, must, must be a child abuser or something wrong with this relationship? <laughs> Then when I, when I brush my hair, yeah, 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 no, no, no. What, what do you think? And yet people, people are reflecting on God. Imagine saying before you pray, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Take your place. Now, that's truth. You are acknowledging the truth. And you're saying, it's because Jesus became my sin. I'm taking my place. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. The Holy Spirit can bear witness. And all the blessings of the righteous is yours. For example, you read in the book of Proverbs, the blessings are on the head of the righteous. You say, that's me. And you read, the seed, your children, of the righteous are delivered. You say, that's me. You won't think it's for Pastor Henry. Yeah, Pastor Henry is righteous in Christ. But you won't think like, it's for him, it's for the elite few, it's for the pastors and those who go to Bible school. No, you know it's for all of us who are righteous in Christ. When you read things like in James, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You say, wow, my prayers avail much. But I tell you this, there's a religious Christian world out there that will come against you. They will come against this message. Why? Because they are hankering after self. They'll say, yes, but. Yes, but. What about the book of, what about works? What about, no, before I talk about works, the Bible says, Abraham, believe God. It was counted to him for righteousness. It's a gift of righteousness by which we reign in life. So the devil is so afraid of it. Show them Romans uh, 4.13 real quick. And look at this. The promise, God promised that Abraham will be the heir of the world. To be the heir of the world, you cannot be always sick, always broke, always mentally depressed. Right? Am I right? So for God to keep this promise in your life, to be the heir of the world, he has to prosper you. He has to bless you. He has to keep you in His peace. He has to give you wisdom and a close walk with Him. Amen. For the promise that Abraham would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the bronze shield, through the law. You do it right, you are blessed. You do it wrong, the bronze falls on you. The judgment falls on you. It's not through the law. And yet the church has preached it like it's through the law. No, this promise that you'll be the heir of the world is not to Abraham or his seed. You're all Abraham's seed because you are in Christ. The Bible says in Galatians, if you are Abraham's seed, you are Christ. Amen. You are Abraham's seed. Hallelujah. And this promise is ours. But it's not through the law. It's through the golden shield. It's through the righteousness of faith. If you... You don't stop that, that burdensome labor. I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to get in God's good books. No, no, rest. God is pleased with you. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Unless you're settled with that, you're not interested in knowing more about God. In fact, you see God as a distant God, an angry God. He's not. He's your Father. Are you listening, people? This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.